In this video, we're going to go over eukaryotic mRNA processing or post-transcriptional modifications. Eukaryotic mRNA processing refers to the fact that the initial RNA molecule that RNA polymerase synthesizes is going to undergo several modifications before forming what is called mRNA. So usually the initial RNA molecule that is produced is called pre-mRNA. Once the pre-mRNA undergoes these modifications, then it is called mRNA. It's important to note that all of these modifications occur in the nucleus, so any mRNA molecule that has been released from the nucleus in the cytosol has completed these modifications. There are three key modifications, the addition of a five prime cap, a three prime poly A tail, and RNA splicing. So five prime cap, this is fairly straightforward. Essentially at the five prime end of the pre-mRNA, a methyl guanine is added. The poly A tail is also fairly straightforward. At the three prime end, there is polyadenylation, which is the addition of a chain of adenosine uh, RNA molecules. The purpose of the five prime cap and the three prime poly A tail are to protect the RNA from degradation, as well as to promote translation. Remember, RNA is not a very stable molecule, so without the five prime cap or the poly A tail, it would degrade easily and quickly, and that's not what we want since we do want the mRNA to be translated into proteins. The last eukaryotic mRNA processing is RNA splicing. So the pre-mRNA that is produced has nucleotides that will code for the protein as well as nucleotides that won't. Splicing is a process by which these non-coding regions called introns are spliced out or removed. And when they're spliced out and removed, that's going to leave the exons, which are the coding regions of the RNA. Now, an important thing to understand here is that what is considered an intron and what is considered an exon is variable because of what is called alternative splicing. Alternative splicing means that one pre-mRNA molecule can actually be spliced in multiple ways. So this means that sometimes an intron that is removed can be kept and sometimes an exon that is kept can be removed. You can have different versions, essentially different forms of a mature mRNA from alternative splicing. And the main evolutionary advantage of alternative splicing is that it allows for multiple protein products to be produced from a single gene. So instead of having to have a new gene sequence for every protein product that we want to make, if there's a protein product that we want that's very similar it just slightly different, then we can produce it through alternative splicing. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is the machinery for splicing. It is the spliceosome. Now the spliceosome is a very large RNA and protein complex, and there's some terms that you need to be familiar with for the exam. So first of all, small nuclear ribonucleoproteins are called SNRPs. SNRPs are complexes of RNA and protein. Now, since we're in the nucleus, the RNA are called small nuclear RNAs, SNRNAs. Okay, so again, SNRPs are RNA protein complexes. There are various proteins and the RNA are called small nuclear RNAs. SNRPs will bind to pre-mRNA. And when SNRPs bind to pre-mRNA, the combined uh, complex is called the spliceosome. And the spliceosome is what carries out splicing. All right, so as I mentioned, just a few different terms you wanna be familiar with, SNRPs, SNRNAs, spliceosomes, and how these different terms are related.